This is the plaintiff, Robert Del Camo. He says he hired the defendant, his first cousin, to paint his house and then never showed up to paint it. Turns out the buffoon sent his guys to the wrong house down the street from his, spent three days painting it the beautiful shade of yellow he picked out. And now the guy won't come to paint his house, which he paid $5,000 for. Oh, brother. He's suing for the return of his money here and now. This is the defendant, Lawrence Beerley. He says he's been painting since 1978 and is the best at what he does. Turns out, based on the directions the plaintiff gave him, his crew went to the wrong house and started painting it. He's ready, willing, and able to paint the plaintiff's house, but is going to need to cover his losses from painting the wrong house based on the mixed-up directions he was given. He's accused of painting himself into a corner. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $3,200 for materials and labor. All parties, please raise your right hand. Have a seat, guys. <laughs> Litigants have been sworn, Yana. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Mr. Dalcamo, you are suing your first cousin, Mr. Beerley? Correct. For $5,000 that you paid him to paint your house because he didn't paint your house. And you are counterclaiming against him $3,200 in labor and costs because you say that what happened was his fault. I have been looking forward to meeting you two all day. <laughs> what happened? Good afternoon, Your Honor. It's my pleasure to be in front of you. This is what happened. Several years back, my house was in need of painting, which my wife never let me forget. We got company, my sister's coming, this, you gotta paint the house, have the house painted, which I've had done several times before. I know the cost. It's gonna run between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars to prepare it and paint it. Which I could have hired a different contractor. And the problem with that is my cousin is a house, you know, painter and a contractor. And the one thing he could do is the best work on Long Island. He really does. And I know if I would have hired somebody else for the next three years when he eats over my house four days a week. He's he at would, your house four days a week? On a slow week. On a slow on week? On a slow week, yes. Uh, so I know he would point out every imperfection this other contractor did. Look, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. So that's why I never hired a different contractor. Why I didn't ask him to do it is because of the maybe 50 years of abuse I've gotten from him, I know he would always put me on the back burner. I hire him, he don't show up. His regular clients, I go to see him at the house, he makes me put booties on my feet to walk in their homes. My house, they'd be swimming in my pool. They'd be, you know, that's the truth. So that's why I was in this predicament. So I finally said to him, I said, hey Larry, I thought this was a good idea. I said, hey Larry, you owe me over $5,000 from last year, which was some, so he screwed up a trip that I did for him and I paid for it and he never paid me and I never really asked, but I said, this is a good time for you to give me the money back. So he said to me, all right, you know, he didn't care. He said, all right, just pay for materials and labor. I said, fine, how much? He said, it'll probably be about a couple thousand for materials and come to about 10,000. So it is a good deal for me. And I did, if he did that, I wasn't really that concerned. If he didn't show up every day, he's there two days. You know, I know the job would be done right. And that so way you're going to pay $10,000 to get the job done? He said approximately. Okay. So I said, fine. That next day, I went with him to, a, to the supply place, his supply place. We picked out the colors and all the supplies. It had to be sanded, scraped, and I gave him 5000 in cash. Okay, he said that following Monday, he was going to start. He was gonna send the crew, Gary, who I happened to met, meet a couple of times, he's a foreman of one of his crews, and three other guys, great. Monday came, and I happened to see him over that weekend too, but I didn't make that much of an issue of it. Monday came, no painters. I come home from work. Tuesday, no painters. Wednesday, my wife's nagging me. I told you, you see, he does, you know, my wife's always, Needle, even though she likes them and they get along better than we do, she's always telling me why I get involved. But and she's always nagging. Yeah, that's what you oh, were gonna geez. say. Yeah. Oh, you were yeah. gonna say, my wife's always. Oh, right. ah, and yeah. then you caught yourself. Go ahead. About him and the situations okay. we get into are, are numerous. Right. But so, so Wednesday comes. I finally call him. Hey, Larry, what's up? You know, it's Wednesday. You said they were gonna come. I realize he could be busy. He said he laughs at me. So it's so funny. He says, Yeah. How do you like the job? 
I thought he was being sarcastic. I said, what do you mean, how do I like the job? He said, you know, they've been there since Monday. Who's been there? Gary, and they got the crew, they got all the equipment. No, Gary's not here. No, he's not. Yes, see, he's arguing. So he blows it. Just call Gary. Give me the number. He gives me the number. I call the guy. And he knows me. Hey, Bobby, how are you? I call. Where are you? What are you talking about? Stay right there. Boom. I get in my car. I'm a couple of minutes away. I shoot down the road. There he is. Big painting truck. The company name. Four guys sitting there. And the company name. Yeah. Is he there or no? No, no, no. He was never going to be there. He's working out in the Hamptons. He can't be bothered with something like this. Okay. So there's the guys. I say, what are you guys doing? We're painting your house. No, show me the house. They get in their truck, I get in my car, we go another three quarters of a mile down the road, they make a left, there they are, third house on the right. There's a house in the historical part of town that has to be white with green shutters, they have a code, half yellow. So I'm looking, I say, what are you guys doing? What are you doing at this house? He said- Why don't they have an address? <laughs> why? Why? I don't know why. He assumed that the guy's been at my house. I don't know why, but it's simple. It is a simple thing. I have one road that runs through my house. Let's call it Highway 25, because so nobody knows where I live if I told it, on this road. He tells him, I'm the first block in that town. Let's call it Town B. The first block <laughs> just south of Highway 25, third house. Yeah, I am the first block if you're coming from out east where he lives. This gentleman lives west of me. So the first house is really what I call the last block in my town. And he paints the wrong house. He's wait, 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 wait. What, what about the people who live in the house? Ah, they are summer dwellers and they come out on the weekend, they're retired, they live in Manhattan. So what do I do? I say, I gotta do something. I knock on the door next door and I ask him, excuse me. I tell him what's happening. You know, I thought something was a little odd, but I just figured that was some kind of primer that he was using. Because no, he knows it has to be white. It has to be white. You look around, there. Well, but who's, who lives there? Uh, this guy lives there, so he gives me the number. Finally, reluctantly, he calls on his phone, gives me the phone. I explain to the guy what happened. Listen, the guy happens to be my cousin. Does I, I'll have him painted back to white. No, don't touch it. He says, I got my own groundskeepers. I, I don't feel comfortable. I'll talk to you on Friday. I'm coming out this weekend. I tell, he's there by now, and he's just looking around. So well, what's the, wait, wait, well, what's he saying when he's looking around? Now he's on the property, what's he saying to he's you? He's saying they screwed up. He said, you, you didn't tell him. I didn't tell him. How would I even know to tell him? You know, I might know the guy. I do know the guy, Gary, but I don't dispatch him. You know, I don't tell him when to start or when to no finish. No one thought to give an address? I just He's been know. in my house. I mean, his daughter lives at my house. Uh, he <laughs> laid porn wait, 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 wait. So who lives at that house and what did okay, they do? This gentleman is a retired gentleman, believed to be a judge, retired. He's a retired judge? That's Well, the guy called him judge. I don't know. I didn't want to get into this guy's whole life. All I know is the guy said he's going to repaint it. Now, here comes the salesperson, which he's excellent at. He showed him the half that his guys painted compared to the half that he had painted was so superior. Look under the boards. I do caulking. I do. He showed him the work was so much better. He convinced the so guy. So the that judge he, hired him to paint no, no, the house white? At, at, at his cost. You know, he said, okay, you can do it because he was going to use his own man. So he convinced him to do it. So <laughs> dodged the bullet. They went okay. and got all the white. I could listen to you till the cows come home. This is only the But beginning. I want to hear from you now. Right. What on earth? happened what happened was my cousin was looking to get a job done and i offered him to use my guys and i told him but i have nothing to do with it oh you know i said, said that. this, Unless you're paying this job my cousin was paying okay. was 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 paying them who did he give the money to he handed the money to me because uh, he didn't know the guys as so well. i guess you have something to do with it then so what happened how do you not give these guys the address because gary said he knew where he lived and I just re-, re Did you fire Gary? No, I didn't fire Gary. So how did this work one. out? So what happened? So tell me what happened. I'm fascinated. Well, what ended up so was the guy, was was the guy they, a judge, by the way? Was he a judge? Yes. Oh my I God. believe so. But what happened was, I don't always get to meet all my clients. But the point being is that he liked our work. He asked us, you guys are more than confident. I just redo it the way it was and that'll be fine. 
So did I did he like, pay you anything? No. No. He got a brand new paint job. You're apparently really good at what you do. Well, we got so a few bonus for the judge. The judge was happy. <laughs> He's so but good at what he does. But now what happens the with that paint guy who job. didn't get any paint job? Your cousin, your first cousin. You share grandparents. What happened with that guy? What happened? What'd you say? What'd you do? What'd you guys say to each other? Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So, is there any defense to this defendant not having to repay the five, uh, five grand? Absolutely not. He made the mistake. It wasn't the, the plaintiff's fault, so he should pay him back. What if the plaintiff actually was fuzzy on the address and didn't, because the, 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 the defendant knew it, but his men didn't know it? Uh, it still shouldn't matter. He still should get the deposit back. It wasn't his house. Well, that's true. It wasn't his house. What do you think? Well, it depends. It depends? <laughs> really? It would depend on what is said in the contract for, like, non-performance or something. How about paint the right house or else? How's that for inside the contract? Going inside the courtroom. He, he, he's suing me because no, he No, no, forget about suing you. I want to know, on the judge's property, when everybody, Mo Curley and Larry get together, what is it you guys say to each other about how you're going to resolve this? Like, what, what, what do you say to him? What does he say to you? I was more concerned about first getting that house back to being the way it should be. I'm sure you were. And... and that was that was then worked out, and there was not much said about his house well, at that point in time. Doesn't he say, "Hey, where's my paint job?" Yes, he does. And what does he do? He calls you up. Are you really there four times? And does your daughter live there? And all, everything he's saying is true. Well, my cousin could sometimes uh, tend to stretch the truth occasionally. I'd say there, I'm there uh, maybe once a week or once That's every a lot. other week. You're close. But because my daughter had lived there, I was there more often to see my and daughter. Your so your daughter did live there. Does does yes. live there. Oh my gosh! All right, so my so, daughter's twenty six. So right, right. So, so what happened? Why am I here? Why, why didn't you just paint his house? Because I felt he was responsible to direct the guys. Because he, I gave him the men to use for himself. Except for that, you admitted that you're the guy who gave your foreman the directions. Well, my foreman said he had been there before and recalled it. And, but and, so why does he end up nailed? Why does he have to have no house? Painted. He could have a house painted if he's willing to pay us to paint the house. But he did pay you five thousand dollars. But the directions, the, 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 the directions. There was a that miscommunication who? between the fact that and I told him. And he should him, pay for. So he just loses his five thousand dollars. Well, I told him that he's responsible for what the men do and for the men to come to his house. Why is he responsible for the men because to come to his house when them, you gave your foreman directions? It was a basically a friendly type of a, um, informal are agreement. Are you listening to me? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm asking a very specific question. You're the guy who caused the problem. So then tell me, why is he the guy who has to hear his wife continue to nag about no paint job? And it gets Why worse. does he end up getting nailed because you and Gary made a mistake? Maybe, maybe I'm incorrect, but I felt that when I said, I'm giving you the men, I'm going to send them to your house that there should have been communication between the two when I thought that they had each other's phone number. Now, here's what I don't understand. You have a counterclaim against him for $3,200 for what? For, for the cost of repainting the other person's house. The judge's back house? To the, back to the original white color. You think yes. he should pay for, the, for Gary making the mistake of going to the wrong house per your directions? He should pay for the painting of the judge's house? You cannot be serious. <laughs> do you two talk to each other? Four times a day. You still talk to each other? Not about this. We'll fight. We fight more than we talk. You tell me my wife's abusing me? I can't walk in town. I like to get muffins and these nice croissants at the nice place. I got to go to another place because everybody else, are, hey, Bob, it looks like your bushes need to be done. Hey, Bob, it looks, because I'll send the bush guy and they'll do their house. You know, I'm the laughing guy. Everybody, I live in a little town. It was, you know, everybody laughs at this thinking it's the funniest thing. And he gets customers. He got a $35,000 job from the guy next door from the judge because he did such a Wait, the guy whose phone you used? The guy whose phone you used? job, yeah. Now he's the hot painter, hot contractor in town. I got to see his trucks all through town. Oh, he never used to come that far west. He used to stay in the Hamptons. Now he'll, he'll slum there for a while while I get left. <laughs> and he doesn't, he likes How do you it. still talk to him, though? If he, he's, essentially what you're saying is that he stole your $5,000. Why do you still why? deal with him? It's just he's my cousin. We're like brothers. What am I going to do? I hear my mother's voice from the grave. Bobby, be nice to Larry. Be nice to... <laughs> his, his, father, his father was mean to him. His father was mean. So he got 18 years of abuse, and I'm getting the next 47 years, you know? I mean, I, I'm his cousin. I mean, I love the guy, but so I had to bring So what did you tell case. him you would do? That you would paint his house if what? 
Did if you? He, if he if he paid me to paint the house. I just don't. Why don't you just paint your cousin's house after all this mess? Why 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 would you not do that? I don't know because I felt that I was right in the situation, and and I felt that that it, it, that's just how it sh how it should be. Did he ever offer to you just pay me the other five thousand dollars and I'll finish your house? Absolutely not. And you're saying that you did? No. What did you offer to your cousin? We hadn't discussed it any further in detail. You never discussed resolving it with your cousin? Not at this point, in fact, uh, no. Did you get somebody else to paint your house? Nope. You want to see pictures of it? It was of yesterday I brought pictures. Show you paint. My neighbor calls up and says, Bob, you got to do something. Paint chips are falling in his pool. All right. Based on what I am hearing, uh, I am going to order you to pay him $5,000 you didn't do anything to earn it. You made the mistake. The mistake was your fault. On, his, on your counterclaim against him, zero. That's my judgment. Well, the judge rules that the wrong directions were your fault. What's your reaction to this outcome here? It is what it is, and I have to abide by it. What's the life going to be like out on the East End now with, your, uh, with Bob there? I don't think it'll change that much. We'll work it out amongst the two of us, and uh, I'm sure life will go on as it has. Mm -hmm. This won't put any kind of a dent into your friendship? You're going to have dinner tonight? What well, you like I said, he's been beating me up as a child. Now he's beating me up as an adult. What do you mean? He was always bigger and tougher than me, so. <laughs> really? You knocked me around a little bit? <laughs> knocked me around a little bit. still taking it on the chin, huh? <laughs> I'm trying. Right. Right. Thank right you. Right down this way. All right, well. He tried to beat you here, but he couldn't do it, Bob. Couldn't do it. No. Finally, justice prevails. Mm -hmm. Have you been beating him up your whole life? First of all, he's a third degree black belt. He owns a karate school. How am I beating him up? So, you know, uh, no, there's never violence between us. He's like a brother to me, but these are the things he do does to me, so I felt he should pay for it event finally. And so now you're going to get the house painted? I mm -hmm. think I'll take the 5000 and pay for an apartment to get his daughter out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> all right, over to Harvey. Thank you. Kurt, I got to tell you, this is a shocking case to me. I mean, the, the defendant treated his cousin so shabbily here. The plaintiff clearly did not get the benefit of the bargain. There is no justification for this, and it's unbelievable that the defendant drew such a hard line.